everyone, and welcome to the only single-player podcast for January 5th, 2015. First podcast of the new year with many more to come. I'm Justin. I make the most of the YouTube content you see here on the YouTube channel. Right. Uh, my name's James Billcliffe, and I, uh, I write. I'm supposed to write news, but I don't, and I write editorials and uh, interviews. And uh, we saved the best for last. I'm Nick Landro. You all know me as the boss. Or the side owner, I have a whip. Yes, the big, the big boss himself. And uh, we're talking, we're we'll be talking mostly today about uh, 2014 because it's just a brand new year now. Looking back at everything that happened this past year. Um, but before we go into games, I wanted to talk a little bit about our site in general. And Nick, I was hoping you could just talk about a little bit about the year you had last year, um, some of the ups and some of the downs, so just yeah. shortly. Yeah. Well. As you all probably know, most well, neither you two have been here for that long. James, when did you come on the site? Two months ago? Mm -hmm. uh, something Three. along those lines, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty awesome start to the year last year. Restructured the site back at the end of 2013. Got things going again and uh, really started bumping up our traffic. Got accepted to Google News. That significantly bumped up our traffic. I uh, had a really strong team of writers going for a while there and then... Uh, this summer, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to leave. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, time to start over once again. <laughs> so here we are now with Justin, our new video guy, because Adam, if you're listening to this, fuck you. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you. But and then we got James that took over for interviews because our editor-in-chief is a lazy butthole. Yeah, that's you, Lashland. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, aside from that, 2015 is looking good. I'm watching the Lions beat the shit out of the Cowboys right now, and I enjoy nice. it. Nice. But so. we uh, we have a bunch of new faces, so and a lot of optimism, I think, yeah, going into well, it. Got a three-person review team now, so that's always going to help. A lot of reviews pumped out like pancakes. I don't think that made any sense, but I said <laughs> it anyways. It works. <laughs> it's fine. We're all with it. But, uh... So we're all we're all pretty excited to go into this new year. Obviously, a uh, bunch of content coming out. <clears throat> um, my, a lot of more more your more YouTube stuff, my, probably more streaming stuff. Lots of stuff on the site. So just keep an eye out. Follow us on all our things. So let's actually talk about games. <laughs> what was your favorite game of last year? Just one game. Mm. My favorite game of last year. It can be any game. So, single player. Any single so, player game. Yeah. So, I've got one. My my actual favorite one isn't actually... It doesn't really count because it's kind of a re-release. But I'm going to go with Danganronpa, uh, Danganronpa Trib Trig Trigger Happy Havoc. Wow, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> I can uh, on it. the PS Vita. Uh, so it's a... It's a sort of... Well, it was released originally released on the PSP in about 2010, and uh, last year it's come out on Vita, and it's really good in the same sort of vein as Persona 4 and things like that. Um, the sort of anime style sensibilities of the characters really inspire complete, uh, mind-destroyingly obsessive uh, behavior. It's nice. um, it's really good, and I really enjoy it. Was that was that like a re-release uh, or like a remaster? Or did they add anything, or was it just for the? Uh, I'm not for this year's release. I'm not 100. Uh, percent It it's just it's that last year's when it came to the Vita, really, and yeah, and so they've uh, released Danganronpa 2: Goodbye Despair in the same year. Uh, yeah, just I've heard as good. All about those games that I've never played them. I'm not a big <laughs> JRPG fan or. I mean, I'm not either, there. but I can appreciate them, you know. I think the last JRPG I played was Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, is that what it's called? On the GameCube. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had no idea what I was doing, so I stopped playing it. <laughs> <laughs> the precursor yeah. to the Wii U. <laughs> I'm going you back to <laughs> Super Smash Brothers. That's all I know. That's, yeah, that's all I play on Nintendo anymore, is Smash and occasional Mario. But I'm hyped for Zelda and Star Fox. We'll talk about that. Talk about that in a minute. Nick, was your what was your favorite game last year? Oh boy, uh, it's tough. It's tough for me. But honestly, I don't know if I had a favorite game last year. I 
played. I really didn't get to play that many games during the summer because I got stuck working at McDonald's, and that was awesome. I bet. Just kidding. I, bet. No, I hated it with all my life. Uh, but, I, you know, this Christmas break, I've been finally playing through a lot of the games that I've been racking up. Uh, I guess Alien Isolation is out there at the top one. I, I haven't finished yet. Too. Yeah, I haven't finished yet. Too much of a pussy, too, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's the atmosphere is just amazing in that game. I can't get enough of it. And you'd think that, I mean, with Outlast, I liked it, but it got boring after a while. Actually, when I first played Outlast, you know, you're supposed to play horror games alone, but I mean, right. I had, I was playing it in my room and people kept hearing screams through the hallway. <laughs> and that was me. So my roommate came in and started watching. He started screaming. So then these girls walked by and found out what we were playing. They sat in and started watching. And then a bunch of other people showed up. I had like 15 people by the time that, you know, that thing was, I was done with that game. And even a girl wanted nice. to stay and sleep in my room. I was like, hmm, that works out well. <laughs> 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 but, uh, uh, Alien Isolation, I, the alien finds a way to change up whatever it's doing every time I play, and it just bugs the hell out of me, but it also amazes me at the same time. It really, it really ramps up. That game ramps up a lot, too. I don't know if you've gotten to a specific point, but. Not 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 too spoilery, but there's like there's moments where there's more than one alien, and like you're you're pretty screwed at some points. More and, than uh, one alien. You yeah. Mean like, the, you mean the android? No, no, no. There's legit. Well, I guess, I I guess I won't talk about it anymore. But there there's more than one alien. Uh, oh, fuck. Like in in one like one room, uh, one area. But uh, so look forward to that. Uh, I'm at the part where you're trying to trap it right now, and I'm at the. There's this part where you have to get on this computer, and there's an android in the room, and then there's an alien as well. And so the last time I played it, which was like the other day, I had my buddy over. We're devising up this plan to stop the alien, so I made a uh, made a sticky bomb or whatever it is. I was like, all right, I'll blow up the android first, then the alien will be like, what the hell happened? And go off and try to find out what happened. So we lay down the, the stupid sticky bomb, blows up the android, the alien... Ha- alien has no idea where I am. No possible way. I'm hiding under a desk. And all of a sudden it starts walking over. I'm like, no way. Gets on its hands and knees and looks right at me. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. So I just hold the flamethrower. I'm there. I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then I died. <laughs> nice, nice. It, seems, yeah, it actually seems quite a lot like uh, like Hotline Miami in as much as the, it, the cycles of planning and repetition and failure ultimately. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I well, like I like games like that because they give you they give you all these different like materials and options to like get from either get from point A to point B or do this objective, and it's uh, I haven't replayed the game, but I feel like I could do it completely differently and it'd be a different experience. It might actually, be hard. It might be harder, but <laughs> trying to just finish the game so I can t- t- try out a uh, crew expendable. I'm interested in seeing what that's about. I haven't even played that yet, but nice. Yeah, there's a. Uh, uh, yeah, that, la- that was the last time I played Isolation was he got on his knees and left right at me, and I was just like, I'm done. It's <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Uh, I have to say, I'm, 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 I'm a bit torn for my favorite game of the year. Uh, they're big triple A's. Like, it's, it's either Far Cry for me or Dragon Age. I'm a huge, huge Dragon Age fan. Uh, that and, that and uh, Mass Effect. I'm big into Bioware games. <clears throat> as, much, as much as I like Far Cry 4... Just I don't know I I like the third one a lot I like the fourth one playing it in segments but I was hoping for more of a story to it and it's just really not I was too like the only gripe I really have with Far Cry Four is that it just seems like story wise they just like did the same thing as Far Cry Three like there's a bad guy and then you there's these rebels and you help and blah 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 yeah um, it was an I, obvious cash and obviously but yeah but I mean it's it's uh, like it's, if you like Far Cry th- Three, you'll like Four. It's basically just the same More. thing, but better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I I love Inquisition so far. I'm not done with it yet, but it's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it, Inquisition's pretty good. I'm also, again, the same along line with, along the lines with the story mode. I'm surprised by how I don't know. I I feel like they wanted you to create more of your own story in the game, and then like the main missions are they're good, but. I don't know, it seems like it's going by real quick, because apparently really? there's only, like, I'm on the fifth story mission, and I guess I'm already more than halfway through the main storyline, mm-hmm. which is weird. 
I don't feel like I've done anything <laughs> besides rack around the world and get power. Yeah, that's what they do. They just give you... They, there's a story, but there's a whole bunch of crap ton of things to do that have yeah. no importance, but it's fun. <laughs> but that's those are probably... Those are our favorite games. Um, least favorite game? Do you have a least favorite game from last year? Like, that's well, that, that people might know of? Well, okay. I'm... Uh... I'm OSP is designated uh, purveyor of disappointment for <laughs> my really? end of year, uh, my end of year article. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily bad games, but the main games that I singled out as disappointing were uh, the sort of reboot of Thief. Oh yeah. Uh, in that, I forgot in that, that, in that sense, if the, Yeah, uh, I think it came out in like February. Yeah. And. Um, I said it, I said in the article that you think if any if any game could break out of the launch window as it were it would have been Thief but it was all a bit uh, it was all a bit linear and I don't know other ones that I singled out were Watch Dogs and Destiny even yeah. though they're both brilliant yeah Thief was Thief was kind of destined for failure just based on how much development trouble they had I think they finally just pushed it out the door and said we're done with this shit there, we're there's a, <laughs> there was a decent amount of hype behind that too or at least from what I, I saw and it just for Thief yeah it just didn't well it was, when it was Thief 4 there was hype and then it just turned into Thief and I don't know I don't know what they plan to do with the next one but I, I couldn't I couldn't get past the way the game played it just I don't know just didn't seem right for a stealth game. There wasn't enough mobility. But yeah, I'd, I'd I'd say my my top disappointment was Infamous Second Son. Really? Really? Oh yeah. How so? I, coming off of the two, Second Son just it just didn't do it for me. It, the gameplay, I like the comic style of two more than the realistic style of Son. And I mean the soundtrack. I mean I don't know. It's it's hard to explain why I didn't like it. it. Just didn't resonate with me like two did. Really, I liked. I I I, I haven't played the first two. I played this one, but I haven't played the first two. But I know I know it's, like the premise and everything. But yeah, uh, if you go back and play two and then compare it to Second Son, there's really isn't comparison. I, really, it's another one of those games that people love to hate. And I mean, I have my reasons for not liking it, but just compared. I didn't like the first Infamous. I loved two, and I just liked Second Son. It's not a mm-hmm. bad game. It's just right. it was disappointing that it didn't really step up from two. Yeah, I, I have to say my my disappointment would probably be Destiny. Not because it's bad, but like I, I can go on about Destiny. I'm not going to. Maybe another day. But uh, <laughs> it it. It really lives on its good gameplay. Like people gave it crap about not having a story. People gave it crap about not having enough content. But uh, it it's it's got great gameplay and it lives on that. But like the the decisions Bungie's making and like the the biggest problem they have is that they don't really communicate to the gamers what kind of game this they want. And so when they do things without t- talking about it, it just makes everybody mad and causes causes a big you know big mess. But uh, well, it's it's, they, it's a it's a fun game. The expansion has been doing well that I've seen. I haven't played it, and uh, they they're gonna they're gonna keep on riding with it. But oh, well, the Fist of Crota, or I mean that that's a mission. Uh, uh, yeah, Dark, Dark Below. Below. I have it. it. It really doesn't add that much to it. Really. No, and <laughs> I tried to. I don't know. I you know being as the job that I have with reviewing games and all this stuff, I don't have time to sink into a game and get addicted to any game really but it based on the initial concept of they tried to sell to everybody that's what people were buying when they thought they were buying that like if you go back and look at the reveal for it and everything and all the concept art they show the game looks yeah. absolutely amazing it looks stunning and then what they released was so watered down yeah, they, they were talking like, it just seems like a lot has changed since like since, since the beginning of it all, like till now, there's so much has changed with Destiny. And well, I just... think I think what their plan is is with all that concept art they showed and all the plans that they had, I think it all turned into DLC, into DLC, and it's all that's their plan to keep the game alive is to keep releasing content like that. But for fifteen dollars, or yeah, it was fifteen dollars for the Dark Below, right? Or is it twenty? Uh, not fifteen or twenty. I don't. I don't know. 
Well, either, even 15 was way too much for that content pack. You think? Oh, yeah. Have you, have you, let me ask you, have you played the first raid? The one that was included see, in the launch? That's what I haven't played, are the raids, but it's still, with one mission, I mean, the raid is a reason to get the content pack, is from what I heard. But I yeah. mean, I've tried, I've tried the strike, strike mission, and it's, the boxes in the game are just bullet sponges, and that's what I hate about it. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no strategy. It's yeah, just, I mean, go in there and shoot them. We literally, I spent four, or I spent an hour with four guys trying to take down the first boss, and literally, we got it down to like the last part. And all they do to keep you coming back is they keep sending out all these useless extra enemies to make yeah. it harder than it needs to be. And it's it's accomplishment once you get it done, but it's frustrating as hell. Now uh, I'm against you. I'm against you on the DLC for the price because I've played the raid. I played the first raid. I haven't played the new raid because I haven't. I don't have the DLC. But the the raid alone is the most enjoyable part of the game, like without a doubt. Uh, especially, uh, yeah. Especially if you have like a like your like five five friends to do it with that you can communicate well. Um, the raid is stellar. Now I'd say the amount of time you're going to be spending on the raid, I'd say it's worth the price. Um, but and you get a bunch of other, you know, weapons and armor and all that crap, but, again, apart from the raid and, like, the new armor, the new missions, they're just not, apparently, they're just apparently lightluster, like you said. Oh, yeah, they're boring. But, I mean, when you when you look back at it, though, Red Dead Undead, per se, was $20, and you got a whole new game, pretty that's, much. Yeah, that's a... That's so, when I, look, when I look at something like that, and then I... That's an expansion. When I look at the Dark Below, it's not an expansion like that. I get I, you. Yeah. No, don't desire to pay fifteen dollars or something like that. And that's, I mean, Activision already has the notion of nickel and diming everybody. So I mean, obviously, people mm-hmm. aren't going to want to pay that. But it's it's interesting. It's I think Bungie's really mostly concerned of like pioneering. Like they want to make a like a brand new type of game and. They're really focused on it, and they're just kind of, I think, short-sighted in a lot of other things in the game. But we'll see how Destiny t- pans out in 2015. Yeah, it's it's I a good game that. in its own right. Yeah, just like, their it, model's it, it, weird. It can be so much better, but uh, we'll see. Like that's that's basically all we can say, I guess. Um, it was sold. Yeah, it was sold very ideologically with the uh, with the ten-year plan and everything. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yep. we were talking about the early concepts and everything like that, and yeah, I agree that, the, yeah, and the the expansion packs aren't really aren't really cutting it as of now. Yeah, well, yeah. we can hope. Uh, James, you mentioned Watch Dogs as sort of a disappointment. You want to yeah. talk about that? Just like, well, yeah, I can do. Um, I th- what, personally, you, I, yeah. What do you think out of all the aspects? I assume you beat it. Yes. You put, you know, out of all the aspects on that game, what do you think were the most, the more disappointing parts of it? Most disappointing. Uh, well, it was just that it was so quintessentially a Ubisoft, uh, a Ubisoft open world game. <laughs> In as much as that, it was very, very samey to things that we've had before. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's. It's very obviously a sore move. The lesson, the lessons of the games that they've uh, that they've come out with before, Assassin's Creed and things like that. But it, kind of like with Destiny, it was sold quite ideologically in the build-up, uh, in as much as that um, this was supposed to be almost almost a new kind of game. Like the came out with the website about the uh, the C2S website beforehand. Where you can look up all different hackery things and all that jazz, and yeah, it was all, it was yeah. supposed to be this massive leap forward, but it was just just just, just stuff we've seen. Just already, it was very you know. very comfort zone. Yeah, it was very within the comfort zone. Well, I think I mean I I want I I, I try to stay positive about Watch Dogs because I really enjoyed it. Uh, I did too. From from what it was. But they they did say it was like oh this is you know brand new but it's just like you know it's the same stuff part they just drew parts from all their other games which I don't think it's a bad I I don't think it's a bad idea like those parts work they took the parts that work well in those other games and put them into this 
and it still works well, but it's just I've uh, I just, I just there's, no, there's a word that I'm looking for, and it's just this the game doesn't live up to what it what what I guess the hype I guess, but uh, yeah. it, it's it's good in its own right, but it's nothing fantastic like it was supposed to be. The best part about that game to me was the vigilante part, just the way I think it actually made you feel like a vigilante, like you know the takedown missions. Yeah. Setting up a trap for a convoy was awesome, and then there were gunfight stews right in the middle of the street. You see civilians running everywhere. They made that feel really good. But, yeah, they, the story, and just, I don't know, I hope Ubisoft turns around and kind of changes up their games for 2015. I don't think it's going to happen in the way that we'd hope, but... Yeah, from what we've seen, like I don't think so either. But it's a it's, for me, it's a it's a very it's a very fir- a very good first game in a series. Like if there's going to be another Watch Dogs, I can I can uh, I 100 percent expect it to be better in all aspects. But like it's feel like they were just treading the waters. They're just, just seeing what they can do. 20, um, 2014 in general felt like a cash in year for everybody, pretty yeah. much just to just to get all the money to keep developing the big games for 2015. The big, That's the what it big, felt like to me. The big word I, I, I'm drifting around for 2014 is disappointing, but it just seems like a filler year for games, you know. I think that well, the end of the year picked everything up. I think and the end of the year kind of shows what to expect for 2015. Because I mean, we got Alien, and we got Shadow of War, and we got Dragon Age, and those are all fantastic games to me. And I think I mean, don't, there's momentum now for what's coming. I mean, there's big games coming out almost every month this year. It's kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, January we have Dying Light, February the uh, the Order, March is Bloodborne, Battlefield. You know. Now, of course, if any of those live up to their hype, then we'll see. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I wasn't that excited for Dying Light until I did that video and I I read some more about it and. Uh, it got me got me excited. So I'm excited for this year. Um, last year, my biggest my the biggest things I liked about last year, of course, Dragon Age, Far Cry. Like you said, it really picked up in the in the year. Um, but the big big point of last year was uh, before we jump into 20, 2015. The big point of last year that I wanted to talk about a little bit was um, the Telltale games because they they were everywhere. There was the second episode of. Uh, the uh, the fable one I can't remember the name, Wolf Among Us. Wolf Among Us. There's episode two of that. There's uh, season two of Walking Dead. They started they started off Game of Thrones and Tales from the Borderlands. And uh, while I haven't played, I I there's, there's, I have an issue with those games because uh, I can't play those kind of games in episodes. I have to play it in the whole the whole thing at the same time. So I haven't I haven't touched them, but and it might be a while till I get to. But uh, they they had a big presence this past year. Yeah, they found a business model that works for them, and yeah, I mean, they're I mean, taking advantage of it. I hope they don't stretch it out too thin, because now they got that Minecraft game coming too. Oh yeah, I heard about so that. So they're working on The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us, Game of Thrones, Tales from the Borderlands, and Minecraft. They're working on five different <laughs> titles at once. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to work. I'm sure those episodes can't take too long to develop. I would imagine, but. Uh, but- but yeah, like you said, it's working for them. And uh, Borderlands and Game of Thrones were pr- pretty big successes uh, mm-hmm. recently. So uh, that's just another thing to look forward to this year and 2016. Um, now for 2015, out of all the games we know that are coming out, most anticipated one game, what you most excited for? I'm going to go with uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki. Bloodborne. Really? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I I quite like the Souls games. Um, <laughs> I can't even get past the first boss. I gave up on that. I can't even beat Lords of the Fallen. I'm done with hardcore <laughs> games like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just quite like the uh, um, just obviously a shameless gaming hipster that I quite like the uh, I quite like the. The sort of feeling of desolation and mm-hmm. the <laughs> subtext cool. of the world and all pretentious things like that. Yeah, I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll play Bloodborne because I hate werewolves, so I like to kill them. So, <laughs> you know, that's why the orders run up my alley too. But honestly, I think, and I'm gonna be oh, shit. I'm gonna be a big traitor here, but aside from Halo Five and its campaign, that's obviously my most anticipated single player thing this year. Mm-hmm. 
but my most anticipated game overall, I think, would have to be Rainbow Six Siege. I right. yeah, I've I've been, I've I'm hoping for Rainbow Six. I'm not I'm not excited. I, I've played all the other uh, Rainbow Six games, and so I'm not I'm not too into it. I just hope there's nothing wrong with it. You know, nothing bad happens. I don't know. It's I'm excited for it too. But mm, uh, yeah, I've been, I just I've been waiting for a tactical shooter for so long. And I'm tired of all the fast-paced games and all that. Like the last multiplayer game I was really into was Modern Warfare 2, and I didn't even really like playing, you know, the regular online gameplay. I'd go to game battles and do the the. Uh, well, I used to play on a team on game battles, and we had very strategic games. It was very slow-paced and tactical. And I think if you find a group of friends to play Siege with, it's gonna be really fun. I'm mostly interested to see what they do with the campaign because I'm wondering. Even though Rainbow Six Patriots is gone, yeah, it seems like it might fit for the presence to have homegrown terrorists because now it's a SWAT team more than Rainbow. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like, I'm excited. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully they they pull from Patriots because I was pumped for Patriots, even having yeah. not seen anything about it. But uh, hopefully, this will live up to the Patriots. Uh, mm-hmm. While while I don't know. Um, if if there's an I don't think there, there's not a release date. I'm hoping this year, <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> yeah, supposed, I think that. there's supposed to be a campaign in that game too. So I'm looking there forward is, to that one yes. too. Uh, God, I can't even. I'm so excited. <laughs> that, yeah, those, I'm a huge Star Wars fan first of all, and then Battlefront games, of course, were huge back in whenever what O four or whenever O uh, two was released. <laughs> I think uh, if if think of Dice and EA pull that game off right, that that could be up there with Call of Duty. I think so too. I think it can take it can be up there. Like I I just hope like it's not too much like like Battlefield. I hope it is like still kind of at its roots like Star Warsy and uh, more focused on I guess Star Wars stuff. But uh, I'm I'm uh, hoping I'm, I'm hoping for you? that. Did you see last year, or this past E3, they showed off behind the scenes, and they showed off the scene of Endor and the Hoth. Yes, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping for that this year, particularly because uh, the, the new movie's coming out in December, so I'm hoping maybe they're... Oh, it's going to release this year. Yeah. There's, there's no way they would miss out on that movie release, timing it with that. I so bet you it comes out right when the, right near the movie release, I, too. I sure hope so. <laughs> but uh, I'm, uh, no doubt we'll hear about that in E3. Um, yeah, E three E three is uh, God. If I go there this year, I'm not coming out of there. I don't think. Probably my resting place is going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be so many things to see and talk about this year. That's exactly why I want to go this year. I haven't gone yet, but making the push to go this year. Yeah, that's that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, big year, I think, this year. But I mean, that's said every year. You know, this is going to be a big year in <laughs> gaming, and uh, you know, ends up like this year, past year, but. I, I'm 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 hopeful. I'm hopeful. Is is there anything you want to see in 2015? That's like a I don't know like a like a new genre or something something new, something you w- want to see happen with gaming. Um, well, I put out a tweet yesterday about a couple de- developers to watch. Um, is Gunfire Games? They're the new developer that formed out of Crytek Austin after Crytek screwed them over and shut them down and all like everybody left and uh that's the development team that consisted of many of the guys that made darksiders and darksiders 2 was one of my favorite games in 2013 i yeah. still listen to that song track and uh they haven't announced what they're working on yet and they probably haven't don't have very much done but i'm curious to see if nordic games and gunfire come up with a contract to make darksiders because nordic nordic owns darksiders now so that That's could good. very well be Dark Sardis 3 team. And then there's Haze Light Studios. They announced their game, or they re- teased their game at uh, Video Game Awards. And that looked pretty damn interesting. And then there's Panache Digital Game, which is the guy, uh, Patrick De- DeSolites. I can't say his name, but uh, he's the guy that created the Assassin's Creed franchise, and now he's opened up his own new indie studio. Oh, neat. And he's working on some AAA game that's going to be historically based. 
So I, if, I'm sure he's going to try and replicate the success of Assassin's Creed. So whatever he comes up with is going to be interesting to watch. Definitely. I think uh, while it's sort of jokingly, I think this might be the year or, or the first year of VR. <laughs> I, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. My idea. Oh really? Because <laughs> I, I can see it happening. I can see it like because I've been I've been following it for a little bit now, and there's some cool games that are coming out with the Oculus, like some cool co-op games even. Like uh, there's some where uh, one someone has to like navigate this area that, but there's enemies and he doesn't know where he's going, and the other person who's like in the Oculus who's a uh, sees it has to like talk to him and has VR support and everything. So I'm hoping, hoping we can get some like actual VR happening, and because there's so much potential, and it's just like it's like a whole new thing. It's not, it's it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> so I'm happy to just, I'm, yeah, I want to see what they can do with it. Yeah, I think so. Um, you were saying Nick about E3. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the. I think that's going to be the longest lines because I think everybody's really interested to see what they're actually going to do with it. You know, with Project Morpheus uh, on PS4. Mm-hmm. Whether that's actually whether PS4 is actually going to have the going to have the juice to be able to keep up with this and to yeah. actually do yeah, something. So. Uh, and obviously, after getting bought by Facebook and all that, I think uh, everybody's interested to see what they they come out with as well. So yeah, just what what they're actually going to do with it. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, I- it's like uncharted territory almost. I feel like. Oh, so like speaking of uncharted, that's probably my most anticipated game. Just oh, putting right. that out there. <laughs> <laughs> after seeing that, there? Uh, after seeing that video, and it plays an experience, experience, and how the AI work and everything, I was like, "Holy crap, that's amazing!" What struck me was how big that that level was. How the uh, there was just there was just a bit where he's sort of running off to the left, and then there was just there's just what looked like ages of just stuff that you'd never even walk in and it just it just looked great <laughs> yeah well if it looks like they've incorporated a lot of what they learned about stealth into that so I, I think it's going to add a whole new gameplay dynamic to it that's really going to be useful without okay. Detroit Baker obviously <laughs> no he's in there too <laughs> he's Nathan's brother <laughs> of course Trey Baker's in the game why wouldn't he be going to be narrating the thoughts in my head. Have, have you ever yeah, looked it's, at Troy Baker's it's, IMBD? It's not a game if Troy Baker's not in it. Have you right. ever looked at his IMBD? No, I am pulled up. That list goes on for fucking ever. There, <laughs> he's in games I wouldn't have any idea that he's in, but he's still in the game. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was looking, I was like, he was in this game? Where the fuck was he at? I never <laughs> heard his voice. Oh, he was some random dude in the background. Okay, Troy Baker was there. Sell the game. Yeah, Troy Baker's the best. <laughs> They're gonna make a game about Troy Baker. You're gonna be able to change his voice. You have to decide what oh, I'm gonna make that. You know what? I'm gonna make that for the iPod or some Troy Baker game. Yeah, like, like a little tri- mobile game. No, the tri- trivia game crack. The iPod. Trivia crack. I'm gonna make Troy Baker crack. Troy Baker crack. <laughs> I play it. Listen to his voice oh, and decide God. which game he's in. <laughs> they just need like a uh, Troy Baker like noise machine so I can fall asleep to that. <laughs> That'd be great. Some, somebody, somebody, make it go. <laughs> I think you can make that yourself. I don't know. Like that sounds like you. Had, that sounds like a personal problem for you. It sounds like you have a fetish. <laughs> no, no. We'll, I'll see. If what you, I come if up you with. really want Troy Baker to lullaby you to sleep, we'll, we'll make it happen. All right, let's. <laughs> it's, it's happening. I'm already. Well, he has an album out. He's got an album out. You know. He's got an album. Like. Yeah. Wow. Have you not seen it? He's, he's, he's got him. Oh yeah, he's a music <laughs> composer too. He's like talented. Him. I can dig it. He's I want to. All right. <laughs> He's talking about what we just want to see in 2015. I want to see some new voice actors. Yeah, <laughs> new voice as actors. As much as I love Troy Baker, hearing him so many characters, I'm like, which character is he? I don't even know. There's those games that. Which game was it? Oh yeah, uh, Shadow Mortar. Most people didn't even know he voiced yeah. the main character. Yeah, he did because he does <laughs> it so well. <laughs> As as long as Troy Baker can, can keep keep making new voices like that, it's fine. We don't need we don't need any, any new talent. And <laughs> need more talent. <laughs> yeah, more more voice actors would be nice. We we need more Nolan North. Yeah, I, I just bring back Nolan. yeah he I want to bring I want to bring him back to you. That'd be best. 
Although I couldn't get over him in that one game where you're a futuristic space soldier flying around. I forgot what it was called. Dark Void. Dark Void, yeah. <laughs> it was sold on the basis that Nolan North was the main character. Yeah, it was. I, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's all it needs, so, like <laughs> I played the demo and I couldn't get over it. I was like, this is so stupid, but Nolan North's in it, so I like it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what they were riding on. So, apart from... We got, we got VR, a bunch of new devs uh, this year. Hopefully VR. Uh, hopefully more voice actors. Um, I, I, th- I, we're every year is a hopeful year for gaming, but um, I, I'm, I, I want to see what indie can do today. Do this, do this year. I said today. We could do this year. Uh, indie, indie developers. They, they, they tend to surprise people every year with something, something. I think, I think 2015 is going to be the double A develop, developers return. That'd be neat. Because you guys know what double A was, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it, like it's, it's yeah, like yeah, it's pretty much died out yeah. over the past you know six seven years. And I think, I think if No Man's Sky is, is a success, that will return double A developers big time. I hope so. It's just money. It's just all about money. So. If, if, well, they can, uh, if, they, in, if they can get back into the in scene... In financial sense, yeah, double A's, yeah, it's about money. But yeah. at the same time, there's also the way that people view developers. And, like, is you can go read any comment thread, and people are always fighting about, well, it's an indie game, so it's not really a game. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, No Man's Sky, I think, like, The Vanishing Ethan, Ethan Carter would be considered a double A game. Mm-hmm. The Forest, I th- even that would be considered a double A game to me. I don't know, it, you know. Yeah, I hope I want I want more more. I just want more games, like just a lot of games. Just you want more games, more, more so games. Many games. I can't even do about more them. More games and uh, and hopefully better platforms to get the games on, like Steam and 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 the consoles. They're great right now, but uh, I just want them to see see them get better, and I feel like they will, no doubt. That'd be interesting as hell to see a new like top video game console come out some out of nowhere. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be. PlayStation, like, what would we do? <laughs> <laughs> like, messing with the time just, continuum. Just be like, what? <laughs> like, well, here's, here's the new... The Ouya is out. Fuck that thing. <laughs> 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 no, I was gonna say, here's the new Samsung PlayStation 24. The, I don't know. <laughs> the, yeah, a Samsung. A Samsung would be probably the, my, my top pick to get into it. But is are the Steam Machines happening this year? Do yeah, they, lot, some of them are already out, I think. Yeah. It's I think the, the Alienware Alpha is already released. I hope those do well. Like, they're not really... I don't feel like anybody's interested in them. Or at least, I'm, I'm not. So if I didn't own a gaming PC already, I'd, I'd rather have an Alienware Alpha than a right. gaming PC. It's just like... It's, it's like it's just like different. It's really different, and I feel like not a lot of people are into it. At least that's, that's the feeling I got from it, but... uh I, I hope those make a big impact this year. Like I, I want to be hearing about them, you know. I, as much guess. as as much as I like them, I I kind of feel like they're useless because I mean, I mean, depending on the situation, they're useless. Because for like for me, I'm in a dorm room. I have my desktop computer. All I got to do to play games on my TV is hook a HDMI cord to my TV mm-hmm. and a wireless controller, and I'm good to go. Saying that, like, we're three guys that are quite into games and stuff, you know, and so and we don't really even know what they are. I think it's quite the the message that they're putting out with it is quite confused. Like, is is a steam machine one thing? There's like nine of them. What do they do? Yeah. There's they all so many stuff. variations of them. It's like, yeah, there's, God, <laughs> I mean, the Alienware Alpha, that I'm interested in because it's got, I think that. Maybe one of the only ones. Well, I doubt it, but I'm not positive on this. But um, like, you can pl- finally play split screen games on your computer. Oh, that'd be neat. I'm just I'm mostly in- uh, interested in seeing how Steam will evolve through the these new consoles and throughout you know throughout the year and next year. Because I feel like uh, I don't know if you saw, but they already Steam's already doing this, trying to get into live streaming. But um, 
where you could just stream and your friends can see it on Steam, all on Steam. And uh, I thought wow. it was pretty interesting. And you know, it just came out of nowhere when they did that. And I just, I feel like I could just like have Steam in in like in like this year, like today, next year. I feel like all I'll need is Steam and nothing else. Like that's that's how that's how that's what they want probably. Steam one. <laughs> yeah, Steam one. Or uh, yeah. <laughs> If you get the reference there, Xbox is all in one thing. Steam's all in one. I feel like that's where they're going with that. Here comes the entertainment apps. Will be oh god, please. But a uh, big year, hopeful. We're all hopeful. Um, what's what's what are we doing this year? Or do we have anything planned, like big? Apart from we got most anticipated happening through like March, right? Yep. That's huge. So expect expect those biggest big games coming out. Uh, we're gonna be covering them. Um, apart from that, any other big big plans <laughs> we want to talk about? Yeah. Honestly, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. I probably should have, but <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going back to college. I gotta start looking for a job off campus in the real world, not my virtual world. <laughs> real world. Yeah. I like the virtual world world better, but I'm probably gonna end up working at like a Dollar General or something like that, and wasting my life away. Money's of money. Sitting in my room and playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, well, I guess for those of you listening for the first time during the summer, if you weren't here last year, or the year before, or the year before that, we do a uh, annual summer giveaway series where we do a lot of live streams. For a lot of recently re- recently released games, that's a tongue twister, and uh, give away copies of those new games and older games. And uh, actually, <laughs> soon I was supposed to do it on Christmas Day. I'm sorry I didn't, but uh, I left my codes at school on my big computer, uh, on a little tiny desktop. Shame. But once we get back, we'll be uh, giving away all the rest of the codes I have from last year in one big shot. So. I don't even know how many games that is, but it's plenty. Some, some to look forward to. Yeah, that'll be on the 13th. Probably the 14th, because I'm superstitious. I don't like unlucky days. <laughs> so lots lots to look forward to here at Only SP. Um, this might be a shorter podcast, but it's fine. Uh, keep up with us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, Actually, just, we have a Twitter page for the podcast already. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I did not even follow now, that see, too. See, here's, follow here's what Twitters. happened. Here's what happened last year. Or, what happened? Yeah, last year we got the podcast going. Everybody, well, people started to like. People started to comment on it. People started to follow it and everything. And then the whole podcast team left, and everybody's like, "What the fuck? Where did everybody go?" I'm like, "Oh, uh, really?" I kind of just put my hands up, like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to make sure that doesn't happen again. No, if it does, I will hunt you down and castrate you. Okay, I, 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 I'll hold you to that. Especially James. I don't like James. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're right, too. <laughs> First to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I'll make sure to lock the door, shy. <laughs> In the words of Liam Neeson, I will find you, and I will kill you. Yes. I'll just escalate you quickly. Next Taken's coming out, like, soon. Excited for that? Next week. Next week, oh, it's, it's great. <laughs> and they are, they already released the biggest plot point of the movie: the wife dies. Oh no! Uh, well. I've never understood that. Why would you tell people that in the preview? Uh, people are going there to see a Liam Neeson kick. I know that so they don't. I mean, they don't care. Even the, like <laughs> true, you're right. Trailers and everything. I can watch the whole damn movie in a trailer. Like even American Sniper, I've watched the trailer and I feel like I know the whole movie. Guy is sad about leaving his family to go to war. Big battle happens, movie's over. Somebody dies. <laughs> Same as story storytelling nowadays, right? It's just the best. <laughs> no, nah, just movies are gonna tra- movies are gonna be made out of trailers. <laughs> it's gonna watch three different trailers in fifteen minutes and the movie's over. And it's still gonna cost you ten dollars to go watch it. Yeah, with other people. <laughs> yep. But oh and then well. you'll go on comment threads online and complain about it. 
cool. it won't matter. It won't, won't make a difference. <laughs> but uh, so this has been. I'll just call it. I'm calling it. This has been the Only SP podcast. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with Only SP, OnlySP.com is your stop for everything single player games. Uh, from news to right now, we're doing. We have some big interviews with some uh, developers coming out. Uh, Flame of the Flood just came out the other day. We're doing the most anticipated series um, where we're highlighting some of the biggest games coming out this year, 2015. So stay tuned. Follow us on all the things. Everything will be in the description, all the links and stuff. Uh, I'm Justin. Uh, I'm James. Nick, and this is probably the only time I'll be on the podcast. So uh, maybe I'll be on again later, but too lazy for this stuff. No. Oh. <laughs> we'll see. But, we'll see what people's reactions to me are in the comment section. Hearing the owner of Only SP be a dumbass on a podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and you won't be able to get rid of my nasal whine. So, nope. I, I will find you and correct your nasal whine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, is if there's if there's something we missed from last year that you think we should talk about, tell us. Uh, we, there's plenty of podcasts coming, so. If, if there's something you want to hear us talking about, let us know either on the Twitters or wherever. You know, we'll find it. So, thanks for listening. Uh, till next time. Toodaloo.